For all red-blooded gearheads who love their RPMs high and their barbecue smoking, welcome to Barbecue and Bolts, where we dig into cars of all kinds, from beaters to burners, and then trade the grease in our nails for barbecue sauce, beer, and good friends. Hang on, because you're riding shotgun with Barbecue and Bolts. Those damn hicks, what are they doing? Hey guys, welcome back. This is the second installment of Barbecue and Bolts for the Honda Smelliman. Okay guys, I'm gonna give you the secret recipe to fixing your car when it's overheating through my pain and suffering for the last couple weeks. If your fan's not working in your element, check these first. Check these two solenoids. Okay, if these two are good, one's to your fan, one's to your AC condenser. Replace these. If that doesn't work, there's a fan coolant switch that's on the bottom of your radiator. If that doesn't work, then replace the fan. And it's like $100 for two of them, and you can get them on Amazon.com. They're like $50 each. Between those three, it doesn't overheat anymore, and I got it fixed. So I'm gonna show you what I did the hard way, I did it backwards. I did the fan first, then I did the cooling switch, then I did that. <laughs> but you know, it has 200,000 miles on it, so fine, whatever. Okay, first thing we gotta do, gotta take this thing off. Just screwdriver and pull them up. Couple of those. Okay, to take this thing off, that's the radiator support. 10 millimeter bolts. And it looks like these are connected too. So we're gonna take those off on each side. And there's a wiring harness underneath here. So we pop all these little goobers out. There's also some going down there, I'll show you. Okay, here we are on the front. And there's two more wiring harnesses. See those uh, kind of bare holes there? That's where I unclip the wiring harness. And this tool, I bought it the other week to reach some stuff when I was doing the starter. Best tool, get it. Pretty much unclips wiring harnesses in places that you can't reach. Good tool to have in your arsenal. Now we just have two 10 millimeter bolts on this side left, two 10 millimeter bolts left on this side, and then one underneath that I'll show you. <laughs> now I already have this bottom piece off right here. So what you do is you unplug this, then there's a 10 millimeter bolt there, and that's it. Then this whole bracket will lift out. Okay, here's what the radiator bracket support looks like. It's out. It's connected with a wire, so you're going to have to just kind of stick it up here somewhere out of your way. There's a lot more of these little wiring harness little things than I thought, though. There's two on the bottom that you got to grab, and that's where this comes in really handy. Get one of those. Make your life much easier. And we got a couple up here and a couple there. Really, it's gonna jump this thing? What's going on? Why they got so much wiring harness stuff? Okay, my overflow tank is uh, really, uh, yeah, taped up. <laughs> I don't know who did that, but I went and got another one. It was 20 bucks. And that's just a 10 millimeter bolt, 10 millimeter bolt to hold it in. And then we just have 10 millimeter bolts here and there. And that lifts out after you unplug it. 10 millimeter bolts here and here. And that lifts out once you unplug it. And you have to take the top of the radiator off. Just the hose. It'll probably leak because it's full. Now, I am preemptively draining the radiator a little bit. Because I want to use reuse the radiator fluid. So instead of taking this off and have it drip dirt down and everywhere, I took the cap off there. Okay, be warned, on the passenger side, there is a little bit of trickery when you're trying to lift out the fan. You got two clips here that you have to undo from the bottom. This one wouldn't come out, so I just accidentally broke it. But then I looked at the new fan, and the new fan has like this little clip. It's going to, I don't know if you can see it, it's not broken there. And that piece is in here. So the only way to get 
in that out is I had to dig it out with a screwdriver and you have to push on that and then I'm gonna pull that out with some pliers so that will be the broken piece out of that clip and that clip goes way down there and it clips into that one down below okay this is the condenser fan this goes on the passenger side this is your cooling fan this goes on the driver's side Okay, I have the condenser fan in. That's the one on the left, on the passenger side. I do suggest putting this one in first because there's a lot of stuff you have to reach with down there. And with this fan out of the way, your hands can get down there rather easily. Okay, coolant fan switch. I replaced both the fans in the Honda Element and the fan still didn't come on. Go figure. That's what happens when you don't check all your wiring and stuff. That's what, what happens when you're lazy like me. You just throw parts at it and, you know, I think it was 13 bucks or something like that. The fans were 100 bucks, but the car has over 200,000 miles on it. Preventative maintenance. We'll just call it preventative maintenance. Anyways, I have to drain the radiator and put this baby in the bottom. And then the fans just might click on. That will solve my overheating problem. Then the car is ready for some road trips. Yeah. Okay, coolant fan switch. That turns on your fans. You've replaced your fans, they're still not working. This will probably be B Y. That's what happened to me. Coolant fan switch. Once you drain your radiator, coolant fan switch right here. And contrary to popular belief, my whole uh, I'm gonna do it with this was uh, dreaming. So I had to go to the store. And this, I already had everything else. But this 15th, 16th socket, deep socket, that fit it. And then that's a half inch drive adapter. And just a little tiny thing like that. And that seemed to fit there. And on the other side, I could grab that. And that was able to break it. And that'll fit the new part too. So seven bucks to put this in. And once I do that, we'll fill it up. Do the whole thing to the radiator again, turn the heater on, get all the bubbles out, blah, blah, blah. Now I got a question from somebody if I replaced the overflow coolant tank that was all taped up. Yes, I did. It was one 10 millimeter bolt, super easy, came out and works perfect. Racing oil leaks. Here's where I parked the element. Pretty bad oil leak. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to fix it. All right, so I got this oil leak underneath the element and I was just feeling on the back of the engine. On the back of the engine back here. And right below all this stuff underneath, I had something dripping on the uh, oil filter. So I got one of these, which is an oil pressure sensor switch. And that just screws in the back of the block. I couldn't find anything that fit, so I had to go buy a 27 millimeter deep socket. Okay, the old oil pressure switch was a 24 millimeter. A new one is a 27 millimeter. So this is where you're gonna have it all the way down here. I'm just tightening up. It's right underneath all this stuff. You can go to the side of the engine over here, reach your hand around there, and feel it. And it just unplugs. Just unplugs off the top. And we'll put this and see. This fixes our oil leak. I think it should. All right, this is what plugs onto the end of it. This was full of oil, so I'm pretty sure that this thing's the culprit. It was leaking through the threads, I think, where it was going into the block. So, I'm gonna plug this on the end, and then put this little protector over it, and we should be good to go. All 
I have an oil leak that I'm chasing, and it's quite a substantial one. And what I've heard, it's the VTEC solenoid. So we're gonna replace this little guy and see if this helps. So the VTEC solenoid is located right on this side, which is where all the oil is down there. And there's the old one right there. And there's three 10, 10 millimeter bolts and two electrical connections. So hopefully I'll be able to reach my hand back there and get it done rather quickly. Okay, this was in my way. So I unbolted it from back here and I'm just bungeeing it over here so it doesn't scratch my arm anymore. This thing was scratching me. Little bugger. Okay, I just took out the VTEC solenoid. It took about 10 minutes. There's just three screws on the outside. But then there's like this wiring harness here. I didn't know what it was, so I just clipped it. It's just like a, yeah, it just holds the wires. Pain in my butt, but I think this is really brittle. That's just fell right off and there's a crack right here. So I think that this was definitely leaking. So now we just have a brand new one, 52 bucks. You know, it's not too bad. Here's a little wiring harness I had to, uh, if you can see that. So that's where the hole is, where everything needs to go. And I'm kind of using this as my eyes to see if anything's leaking out of the valve cover. And I've already replaced this part, just a little, a while ago I thought that was leaking, but it turned out to maybe be this part up here. And if it's not up here, I'll just keep going up in the valve cover gasket, but hopefully that's it. Okay, finding the three bolts, not that hard. And I got this thing back together in place. And I really think that that was my oil leak. I'm hoping, so. Okay, based on what I just saw back there, I didn't see anything coming out of the valve cover gasket. I used my camera as my eyes back there. And uh, I really think it's this, uh, this part that I'm putting in. So I think this will fix my oil leak. I'm pretty positive because I didn't see any oil leak above it at all. So we're going to stick this in. I think that took about maybe 15 minutes to get out. And that's being lackadaisical. Really lackadaisical. <laughs> so we'll just probably about 15 minutes to take, put in. So I would probably say a half hour job for the whole thing. And uh, might fix the oil leak. Let's pray. Okay, the first thing I noticed with the new VTEC solenoid in is that it has a lot more pickup than it had before. When the VTEC solenoid was leaking, which I know it was, because it had a crack in the very bottom of its gasket. I mean, the element's still pretty slow. <laughs> but I think it's probably at least a third faster than it was. Anyways, that was the first ride of the Honda Element. Much faster. Yeah. Now, a lot of the oil was coming from back there behind the block. So I replaced the engine pressure oil switch, which lets you know if you're low on oil. That was all wet, and so I replaced that. And then right above it, I still had a leak after I replaced that. And that was like $12. So right above it, I replaced the VTEC solenoid valve, which is right there. That was $52, and that solved most of my leak, but it's still leaking a little bit more. So I've ordered a gasket for the valve cover. That's coming, so I'll show you how to do that. But in the meantime, you know, this is a PCB valve. Can you hear that? This lets all the pressure out of your engine. If the engine pressure has nowhere to go, then the oil is going to go out all the seals. So, good to replace the positive crankcase ventilation valve, and it's cheap. Okay, we just do two 10 millimeter bolts on the top here. This will take the cover off. All the crankcase admissions go back in here, and it gets reburned inside the system. So we'll just take this off with needle nose pliers. All right, you just squeeze there with the needle nose and then just pull the hose off. 
So this is a 17 millimeter. This will fit right down on there. Okay, here's the old one compared to the new one. And if I shake it, I do hear some stuff, but not near as good as this one. So that one's, this one is pretty clogged. So it's right above the alternator in that hole. Okay, we have it screwed in. Now, we just put this back on it. And we're good to go. I've been getting some clunks in the front and further going to the Honda Smellament to make it my wife's daily commuter. I'm going to replace the end links. So I have some new end links and I've seen some videos where it's like super hard to take these nuts off and stuff but I mean I just put a, uh, let's see what size is this, a 9 16 on this nut and it just came undone. I was going to spray them with WD-40. But it should be a pretty simple process and I don't know, never take it out of the box unless you're ready to do it though because I've lost the other one that actually fits this side. <laughs> so lesson learned, don't take it out of the box to show your friends. If you do, put it back in. So this looks like a pretty easy, I'll let you know how long it took. I think I'm going to invest in one of those electric ones that do this for you. Seems a lot more fun than what I'm doing. Now the bottom bolt, you can put a 9 16 uh, socket on there. Uh, the top bolt, not really enough room, so I got a 9 16 wrench on there. And I'm just gonna give it a couple of nice taps with my hammer and it should come right loose. Yeah, you just gotta watch out for this brake line while you're hammering. If you put it in an angle like that. But uh yeah, mine came loose. I guess I live on the west coast, so uh, we don't have rusty bolts or something. That was uh, rather easy. Oh, and I found my part. So, sitting in one of my toolboxes, all wrapped up. So, uh, good news and more good news. Don't need a torch. And, you know, this is coming off a lot easier than I anticipated. I already had some... Uh, Propane heaters on Amazon already ready to order to heat up the metals if they're all rusted, but I think we're doing all right. Just when you think it's going to be easy, now when this turns, the whole inside of it turns. So I need to get something from the store, and that nut's not coming off. I need to get something from the store, like needle nose, something of these. So I have to, need to go buy another tool to, in order to take this off because it's just spinning around. Okay, so I went and bought some vice grips, some needle nose vice grips, and that's the only way I could grab this piece. And I didn't disconnect it. This is how I grabbed it. And that piece was spinning around and I couldn't get the bolt off the top. So it's off now. Um, yeah, I would say that took probably 30 to 45 minutes of getting it off. And that's just because it started spinning and I didn't know what was happening there. Okay, getting these on and off. These, uh, these things spin around. These spin around. This whole unit spins around. So I can't even put the bolt on. So I'm holding it with needle nose on one side 
and then tightening on the other, then it works. So that's just gonna have to be probably how you do it. Hello guys, so the end links worked. I no longer have a clunk when I go for pumps and the car handles much better. So end links, do them. It's like $22 each and there's two of them, two different sides, so be careful. Oh, the Honda smell of it. The gift that keeps giving. So right now, I don't have any dash lights. That's just another issue that came up that I just noticed. The little needles, those light up, but nothing else lights up. And the center console doesn't light up, and it's supposed to light up. So I bought some cool little blue LED lights, and I'm gonna put those in. So I'm gonna show you how to get the dash part and put those in. And hopefully that works, but it probably won't. Because, you know, 2003's had a bunch of uh, wiring issues and that's probably how it's going to go for me. But we're going to do the dash lights just in case. Here we go. First thing you do is stick a screwdriver in here. This is the side panel. Right there. Take a screwdriver. Just pop it up. Okay, that needed two hands. So the next thing, there's going to be a screw. Right here, and I have the wrong. I need Phillips. One screw, and the whole thing pops off. Okay, I had to use two hands. Pretty much, this is all clipped in with clips, and you just pull, unclip. Just keep on pulling, it'll go. Okay, now we have four screws. One, two, three, four. The four screws are out, it just pulls forward, and then you have. Two clips, take it out. And my dash light's working just as good as they did before. Not working. Okay, here's where all the bulbs are. You just take needle nose pliers, twist to the left, pull out, and boom. That's it. Now these are all your dash lights. Boom, 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 boom. And these are your odometer lights. My odometer doesn't work either, so we'll see if this fixes it. And I'm gonna replace all these, and I bought the... I bought the wrong ones. Ugh. Okay, I was able to check all the bulbs, and they are in fact okay. You can see the little wires inside still connected, so... Even though I bought the wrong ones, that was only a $4 mistake. We're gonna put this back in and see if I can't find the uh, wiring dish. Okay, so I went online just to kind of check to see what people are doing. So I've checked the bulbs and they say it can be a, a ground thing. And this was really just moldy in here and you see all the rust? So I'm thinking it could be a ground thing. But at the same time, they say that these things you just need to replace the whole cluster with a used one and they say the Fonzie method where you just hit it on top and look all of a sudden wait for the beeping to stop all of a sudden my odometer works I just hit it really hard on top and the odometer works so I'm really not sure that's an internal thing obviously but I'm not sure if the lights are working on it or not. Because when I turn my lights on, I really can't see yet. I'm gonna have to wait till it gets dark. But even the radio light, when you turn the lights on, the radio light never turned on before. It would actually go from dim to dark when you turn the light on, so. Oh, Honda Element. The gift that keeps on giving. Hallelujah. Okay, hitch on the Honda Element. I have a 2003 Honda Element. I got a hitch for $50 from the scrapyard. It has no bolts or anything to put it in, so I went down to uh, Lowe's, just a hardware store, and I got some 
stuff that'll probably make it fit. I'm only going to probably carry a bike with it. Probably not going to tow with it because the Honda Element, it's 200,000 miles on the engine. It's kind of slow. So we'll just put in the hitch. It's rusty. I need to sand it, paint it, and install it. None of the U-bolts you buy in this store is going to fit this thing. So I, what I suggest is getting uh, your own bracket on the top and bottom and two screws and nuts holding it all together. Because I used my U-bolt there and I tried to squish it to make it work and I just sheared the end off and that's not going to support anything. And here's the really rusty $50 itch I got. Needs a little bit of sanded. Okay, I've chipped off most of the paint that I could with the screwdriver. And all that's left is rusty. So now we're going to take this and just go back and forth until I get some of the rust off. Then I'll spray it with Rust Oleum and that'll be good enough. Okay, I've sanded, I've vacuumed, and I just wiped it down with some um, I found in the garage. I think it's for walls and ceilings, but hey, it'll work. <laughs> it'll clean that up, get all the dust off, so now I can paint it. And I'm just painting it with Rust-Oleum, stuff that you can paint just right over rust with. All right, first coat is on. All right, it looks like brand new. It's all painted, ready to put in. And I also have all of my bolts, nuts. You see the bolts go through here, carriage bolts, five and a half inch carriage bolts to lock washers on the other side. And in the middle we have a U-bolt that I sheared off. We're gonna have to fix that. But I'm not going to be towing too much with it. I'm just going to put a bike rack on it. So I'll have to get a new U-bolt in the future. It is in. Two inch receiver. Went up, uh, you had to bang up both sides pretty evenly. Otherwise it wouldn't go on. And it took about an hour to put in. Good enough. <laughs> it's good enough. Hey guys, thanks for watching episode two of the Honda Smellament. That was a long one. There was a laundry list of things wrong with this thing, but now it runs fine and it, we're having a really good time with it. And I have some great plans for it coming in the future too. So click like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.